time now for another look at the papers. Here with me to review them this New Year's Day are the author and broadcaster Emma Wolfe and the writer and broadcaster Edward Adu. So welcome back to both of you. One more stint and then Good you can morning. go back to bed. <laughs> I know it's been a long <laughs> night for you both. Um, hopefully a yeah. nice celebrations. Um, but let's uh, dive into the papers because we don't have a huge amount of time. And Edward, um, an article in The Telegraph has taken your interest. The headline is Slippery Slope to Lockdown, Say MPs After Travel Curb. So what are they talking about here? So they're talking about the restrictions. Uh, China basically opening their doors from January the 8th. Now, there's the restrictions um, which have been imposed by uh, the government, Rishi Sunak, uh, his decision to bring back uh, COVID uh, rules for people coming over uh, from, from China. So uh, people coming over need to have a negative um, COVID test, uh, a 48-hour COVID test test. A lot of people have said that there shouldn't be any rules in place, that the door should be open. The problem is um, some, some some critics, some, some specialists have said, well, look, if this is not in place, because of the situation, because of what's going on in China at the moment with uh, the, 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 the cases, up to 5,000 uh, cases or possibly more. The thing is, nobody knows, but the the issue with COVID in China is um, it is critical. And the, the problem is if there is a variant and if the doors are open and it, it may, it, we don't want to go back into, I'm sure you remember, Anna, lockdown. It wasn't, a lot of people didn't, it was, it was a turbulent time. Now, if any variants come in, a lot, a, lot, a lot of people think we may go back. It may revert to the old times of being having these lockdowns if there are, um, if any variants come in and if it causes a spike and there, there are additional cases uh, or, or more, more, more COVID cases. Well, yeah, and, and while um, it, the article says Tory MPs have broadly welcomed the move, there are some that are making it clear that um, it shouldn't be the start of, of a new raft of COVID restrictions. Um, so that's one to watch. Um, Emma, let's, uh, you, you want to take us to the mail, don't you? Looking ahead to a week of rail strikes. Yeah, this was really startling. Um, I hadn't quite realised that we had so many rail strikes coming up again um, imminently. So pa passengers are basically being told that they should brace for the worst week of rail chaos in more than 30 years. Around 80,000 trains, Anna, are going to be axed. Um, there are five days of consecutive rail strikes coming up. So we've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday from the RMT strikes. And then on Thursday, we've got ASLEF strikes. It's going to impact around 16 million journeys. This is people trying to get back to go, trying to get back to work after Christmas, trying to go to the January sales, shoppers, tourists, commuters, everybody. It's going to cost the hospitality sector hugely at a time when they've already been completely, you know, decimated really by these strikes leading up to Christmas, which is obviously their busiest time of the year. Um, yeah, and this is the worst week. It's being described as the worst week of travel disruption for a generation. So really, we've got a, a heck of a week of it coming up. Good luck trying to get a train anywhere really yeah it's certainly disruption for passengers interesting to see where uh, public opinion lies on this whether they support uh, the rail workers walking out and their calls for, for, for more pay and um, and discussions over conditions as well uh, let's uh, stick with transport shall we edward uh, you wanted to talk about buses i don't know why you want to talk about buses have you got an interest in buses by any chance well, as you can see behind me, it's not connected to the story. It's nothing to do with my models, but it's about the bus cap, which is about to, uh, to come into effect. And a lot of people thought this was the, the government's uh, initiative to try and get people onto buses, which I think is a great thing. Uh, out of London, it's a bit tricky. A lot of people say they don't often, they don't have any bus services or bus services are expensive. So this cap, it will uh, mean people pay no more than two pounds. Some people are paying, paying more, but I thought it was a long-term thing. It's only meant, it's only going to last till March. Now, a lot of um, campaigners are urging the government to extend this in order to try and get people off their cars and onto buses. And I think I think it's a great thing if if parts if if different parts of the country can adopt what happens or what happens here in London with the cap. So you pay no more than one pound sixty five, and you can hop on a bus for an hour. If other initiatives can, uh, if, if that can happen out of London, especially with this £2 cap, I think it certainly will, uh, will, will be great for passengers out of the capital. 
Lovely. And a very, I mean, literally 20 second look at the front of the mirror um, for us. Would you, Emma, to, to, to round things up? Yeah, not a very happy episode for either party involved. This was the row between Lady Sarah Huss, Susan Hussey, I'm, I'm sorry, Prince William's godmother and the charity campaigner, um, Ngozi Falani. It's been revealed, uh, it's been dredged up that, in fact, Lady Hussey, who had to resign and publicly apologise, is indeed on the coronation guest list, okay. along with many, many, many other people. Uh, but she will be on the coronation guest list for, okay. for King Charles coronation next May. OK, we'll have to leave people to decide what they think about that and say thank you to both of you. Thanks so much. Happy New Year. Thank you.